Football in South America has long been associated with chaos. The sport attracts a level of passion rarely seen in Europe. It's very much a way of life for millions, is literally a matter of life and death to some, and is deeply political. From the murder of Colombian defender Andres Escobar in 1994, to the riots which marred the 2018 Copa Libertadores final between Boca Juniors and River Plate, tension surrounding the sports has often boiled over and has sometimes become bloody. As far back as 2008, an estimated 232 people had died in incidents relating to football in Argentina alone, while corruption, match-fixing and organised crime has also been an issue in the region. So it's perhaps no surprise then that at a time of heightened political tension on the continent and in the midst of a global pandemic that this year's Copa America has become embroiled in controversy, with its last minute move to Brazil, one of the world's biggest Covid hotspots, receiving heavy criticism from fans, journalists and even the players themselves. But why was the build up to this summer's tournament so chaotic and why did it almost not go ahead at all? Let's find out. This summer's Copa America was already set to be unique. The longest running international tournament in world football, it ran for the first time all the way back in 1916, when it was known as the South American Football Championship. 104 years later, and for the first time ever, it was set to be hosted by two different nations, Argentina and Colombia. Announced in 2019, just months before Brazil hosted the last edition of the tournament, it also marked the second time in half a decade that the competition would be played in consecutive years. In 2016, they made an exception to the four-year intervals established nine years earlier to mark the competition centenary, and for the first time held it outside the continent in the United States, with Chile winning it for a second consecutive year after a second consecutive victory over Argentina on penalties in the final. A year later, CONMEBOL, South America's governing body, decided it was going to hold the Copa America in the same year as the European Championships from 2020. The proposed Argentina-Colombia event also saw a format change, with the usual three groups of four reduced to two groups of six, with fixtures from Group A all taking place in Argentina and games in Group B all being held in Colombia. As for the competition's tradition of inviting guest nations to take part, Qatar was drafted in for the second consecutive year, while Australia was set to join in the festivities for the first time. But much like with the European Championships, Olympic Games and other major events that were set to take place in the summer of 2020, the global pandemic forced CONMEBOL to rethink in the March of that year. They postponed it until June 2021, and for the best part of the following 15 months, it looked set to go ahead as originally planned, albeit a year later. In February 2021, both Qatar and Australia were forced to pull out due to the competition clashing with rearranged World Cup qualifiers, presenting a relatively simple solution. The tournament was reduced from 12 teams to 10, with just two rather than four teams eliminated in the group stage. But by May, there were serious concerns about whether the competition would be able to go ahead. Colombia was stripped of its hosting rights following weeks of protests and civil unrest in the country, initially sparked by controversial tax reforms proposed by President Ivan Duque. By the end of the month, Human Rights Watch had reported that 63 people had died as a result of the violence, holding the police responsible for a number of deaths, while injuries, arrests and people reported missing were all in the hundreds. Clearly the country was not fit to host an international football tournament, and it was of little surprise when their proposal to postpone the Copa America until November was rejected by CONMEBOL. With the tournament due to kick off in 24 days, Argentina became the sole host country, but by this point doubts were also growing over their ability to put it on. On the same day Colombia lost its right to co-host the Copa America, Argentina entered a nine-day lockdown due to a record surge in cases and deaths from Covid, with over 200,000 contracting the disease and over 3,500 dying from it in the week leading up to the decision. Its domestic football season was also suspended for this period. On the 30th of May, CONMEBOL announced that Argentina would also not be hosting the tournament. With less than two weeks to find a new host, and with high-profile players such as Luis Suarez publicly expressing concerns over the safety of the tournament, the 2021 Copa America was in a precarious position. But given the financial incentive, with the 2019 tournament having generated $118 million, and with each competing nation this year set to receive at least $4 million, it was always likely CONMEBOL would pull out all the stops to make it go ahead. Within 24 hours of Argentina being stripped of its hosting rights, Brazil was announced as the new host of the Copa America. 
At the time of the announcement, Brazil had lost roughly 207,000 to COVID in the previous three months alone, and to date the country has suffered over 480,000 deaths in the pandemic, second only to the United States. COVID remains a significant problem in the country, spreading through the population at a high rate, even if at the time of the announcement the rate of infection was lower than that of Argentina. The country's president, Jair Bolsonaro, who for years has courted controversy for his views on LGBT rights and environmental policies, among other things, has been notably relaxed on COVID since the outbreak, referring to the virus as the little flu, referring to governors who imposed lockdown measures as tyrants, downplaying the need to get vaccinated, and earlier this year telling his citizens to quit being a country of sissies. In March, the three heads of the nation's military forces all resigned after he sacked the defence minister, something which according to Brazilian newspaper Folha had never happened before in the country's history. And in the days leading up to its announcement as the Copa America host, people gathered in over 200 towns and cities across Brazil calling for Bolsonaro to be impeached for his handling of the pandemic. Bolsonaro may well have saved the historic competition from being cancelled altogether, or at the very least postponed once again, and it certainly went down well with Conmebol, whose president Alejandro Dominguez publicly thanked him for stepping in last minute, despite the country facing very similar challenges to those which deemed Colombia and Argentina unfit to host. It has not been received well elsewhere, however, with Brazilian Senator Renan Calheiros calling it a championship of death, while leading sports journalist Juca Cafori argued that, while the tournament would be played behind closed doors, it would be wasting resources and attention that should be directed towards Brazil's thousands of infected patients. Commentator Luis Roberto called it a slap in the face of all Brazilians, and it's hardly an easy sell to a population which, in relatively more stable times, fiercely protested the 2014 World Cup due to the vast amounts of public money spent on it. Meanwhile, several states have refused to host matches, meaning the tournament is taking place across just five different stadiums, while Mastercard, Ambev and Diageo all pulled their sponsorship in the days leading up to the first game. And the most notable opposition came from the Brazilian national team itself. The day before the announcement, they were visited by Rogério Caboclo, the president of the Brazilian Football Confederation, as they prepared for their World Cup qualifiers, but were apparently not told of the country's plans to host the Copa America. And by the 4th of June, it was widely reported that the players were planning to boycott the tournament, once again throwing the possibility of it going ahead into uncertainty. Following their qualifier against Ecuador, Casemiro, who along with the rest of the squad had reportedly been told not to speak to the press by Caboclo, told reporters, we cannot say any more because everyone knows what we think, words which were widely seen as an effective confirmation of their opposition to Brazil hosting the tournament. In the ensuing days, Caboclo was suspended from his role as president of the CBF following reports that he'd sexually harassed a staff member, allegations he denies. Meanwhile, another report, this time from prominent journalist Andrei Zizek, accused him of promising Bolsonaro he would sack Seleção manager Tite, who was also supposedly unhappy about the tournament's move to Brazil, and replace him with former Grêmio boss Renato Gaucho, a known supporter of the right-wing leader. Tite ended up keeping his job, while the players eventually put to bed rumours of a boycott, releasing a statement saying, For many reasons, humanitarian or professional, we are not satisfied with the conduct shown by Conmebol relating to the Copper America. At no time did we want to make this a political discussion. We have a mission to achieve wearing the historic yellow and green jersey of the five-time world champions. Then, three days before the tournament was due to start, Brazil's Supreme Court met to discuss requests to have it suspended, but ruled that the Brazilian constitution did not grant them the power to stop it going ahead. As this goes out, the tournament is very much happening, but unsurprisingly hasn't been without its problems. Ahead of the opening game, Venezuela's squad was depleted after confirmation that eight players had tested positive for COVID, and by the 15th of June, Brazil's health ministry had reported a total of 52 cases related to the Copa America, with 33 of those being players or staff. Luckily, Conmebol have removed limits on players being replaced in squads due to the delicate situation. Meanwhile, Lionel Messi, whose voice obviously carries weight in South American football, said he was concerned about the situation in Brazil going into the tournament. Fans, coaches and players will be hoping the competition can be concluded safely and without any serious outbreaks, but for so many in Brazil, the damage has already been done.
So that was our explainer on the 2021 Copper America, but what do you make of the situation surrounding it? Let us know in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for similar videos we could do in the future, let us know too. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave it a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to Euro Football Daily? Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.